of this recovery and um, response and recovery, and that is the aspect of children and particularly orphan children. I've been very proud to be the uh, leader of the coalition uh, in this Congress of over 220 members. We are completely united and completely nonpartisan in our advocacy for orphans here in America and around the world. And this is a moment where I'd like to spend, um, although my time is short, saying that this is a, a good time for us as a country uh, and as members of Congress to really try to understand the magnitude of the challenge before us. Let me begin, before I go into the situation, to personally and by name thank the members of the United States Senate that have stepped up to date quickly, forcefully, to join this effort. Madam President, your name is at the top of the list. You're on the top of my list here, the senator, uh, junior senator from New York. We thank you for your extraordinary leadership. Uh, the senator from Colorado, Mark Udall. The senator from Massachusetts, John Kerry. Uh, the senator from Michigan, uh, Carl Levin. Chris Bond from Missouri. Arlen Specter from Pennsylvania. Bob Casey from Pennsylvania, Herb Cole from Wisconsin, uh, Mark Warner from Virginia, um, uh, Senator Barrasso, Senator Johnson, Senator Bennett, Senator Stabno, Senator Bill Nelson from Florida, Senator Lautenberg, Senator Thune, Senator McCain, and Senator Hutchinson, and my co-chair in all of this, obviously, Senator Inhofe. We are a bipartisan group. Our numbers are growing every day. Numbers of senators that say that we want to focus on the welfare of children and particularly orphans and come up with a better plan to respond to this humanitarian disaster as it relates to them. We are committed to the fundamental, really, um, almost a concept that I don't know how anyone could argue, but people do, but we, all of us, understand that children actually belong in families. I know this is a difficult concept for some people in our country and in the international community to grasp, but children don't do well alone. Children don't do really well in orphanages no matter how well they're run. Children really don't want to grow up in group homes, of which we have thousands of children in our own country in group homes. Actually, children want to grow up in families. This may be a startling concept for some, but not for us. That's why we advocate uh, for child welfare policies that at its beginning, middle, and end advocate the basic fundamental truth that children are best raised in a family with one responsible parent, if not two. We don't think there should be any argument about that, so we are puzzled as to why we have some difficulty sometimes explaining that in situations like Haiti, or in America, or in places in Africa or Central America around the world, there are so many barriers to adoption. It breaks our heart. It just breaks our heart, one barrier after another. We think this is quite simple. We think these barriers have to come down, and we are determined to pull them down. I want to give some numbers uh, to you all that will be startling to you because they are to me. In America, we have 320 million people, approximately. We have 100,000 orphans. It's a lot of orphans in our own country. They're invisible to people. We try to bring their pictures to the floor sometime and in every way tell people there are 100,000 magnificent children of all races and shapes and sizes who are in need of a family right here at home. We do our best to promote domestic adoptions and have been doing a much better job. Americans adopt about 120,000 children a year, mostly from our foster care system, some infant adoptions in America, and happily as well, 20,000 international adoptions. But Madam President, I'm glad you're sitting down because when you hear this number, you would fall down if you weren't sitting down. Haiti, that has nine million people, remember we have 320, they have, only, they have nine million, they had 380,000 orphans before the earthquake struck. 
I'm going to repeat that. They have 9 million people. They had 380,000 orphans before the earthquake struck. We can't begin to estimate how many orphans there are today, but I promise you that number has at least doubled. Now, I am not going to be part of a system that says with those numbers and that truth that our job is to find those children, dust them off, fix their broken limbs, heal them physically, try to help them emotionally, and then stick them in orphanages for the rest of their life. I'm not going to support that. And I'm hoping that the members on this side won't support that either. That's what we've had for the last 50 and 100 years in terms of policy all over the world, even in Haiti. We can't have that anymore. And then the treaty, the international treaty that we have all been a part of trying to help says this. It says every child should stay in the family to which they were born with the parents that brought them in the world. When they're separated from those parents through death or disease or famine or war, they're then to be placed as quickly as possible with a relative that is willing and able to raise them. If I passed away, the president knows, the chairman, president knows, my sisters or one of my brothers would step in. If my husband and I died, my sisters and brothers would step in to raise our children. That's normally what's done all over the world. It's no surprise. But when there's no family member to take in a child, then the treaty says you shall find a home for that child somewhere in their country, in their community, which makes sense. Culturally, that makes sense, although I'm a big believer in cross-cultural adoption and biracial adoption, huge supporter of that. But I understand we want to try to place children as close to their initial beginnings as possible. But Madam President, when that becomes impossible, it's our job to find them a home somewhere else in the human family. Because after all, we are one human family. If anybody would like to come to the floor to disagree with me, I look forward to debating that with them. I don't think I'll find any argument here among senators from the very conservative to the lib most liberal. It is just a basic moral tenet that we are one human family. So it makes me so angry when I see governments, sometimes even our own, sometimes even our own bureaucracy, sometimes even our own embassies, um, fighting that concept because they throw up their hands and say, we just can't, it's overwhelming, we can't find a way to do it. Every excuse in the world to keep children from the one thing they need most is a parent, is someone to love them. And if anyone thinks that just feeding children and clothing children is what God is calling us to do, I would beg to differ. Yes, we have to keep them alive. Yes, we have to give them care. But what we, most importantly, little human beings need bigger human beings to raise them. And if they don't get that, they end up not growing up in a strong way. They end up in our prison systems. They end up homeless. They end up sick. Not that every child that's in a family in America, even with the most loving parents, ends up always wonderfully, but they most certainly have a better opportunity. So I'm just putting a line in the sand here and speaking to my colleagues that I'm proud of the 40 members of Congress, House and Senate members, that sent a letter to Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, who all of her life has been a leader on this. We're so grateful she's there as Secretary of State. We sent this letter to Secretary Napolitano, and I'm gonna put this letter in the record, and I'm pleased that the letter that we just sent three days ago has already been responded to. The departments here have issued humanitarian parole for the orphans that were in the process of being adopted, and there were a couple of hundred. Parents here have been desperate. They've already been matched with their children. They have pictures of their children. They were in the process of adopting these children. You can imagine how desperate they are. That process is underway. We're gonna to continue to press to make sure that not just the green light was held up, but that our government at every level from defense to security to transportation to homeland security is doing everything they can to execute the swift and safe 
um, moval of these children from Haiti to American families that will nurture them and support them. Then the next step, and I see my colleague from uh, Utah here, and I'm going to end in just a minute. The next step will be, Madam President, to work with a broad coalition of faith-based communities in our country and around the world with private sector um, corporations, large and small, with individual Americans that want to contribute and be a part of this effort. I intend to lead and set up a framework so that thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of orphans in Haiti can find the family to which they were born. We're going to try very hard. If not, a relative in Haiti. If not, some place in Haiti for them to live uh, in the joy and comfort of a supporting and loving family. And then if not, then somewhere in the world where these hundreds of thousands of orphans, and I hope not to say this, but potentially a million, but let's hope that number doesn't ever reach there, finds families. This is not going to happen in the next 24 hours or 48 hours. But with our concerted help, and vision and leadership, it can happen, not just in Haiti, but around the world, including right here in the United States of America. So I want to thank my colleague, Jim Inhofe, who is the co-chair of the Adoption Caucus. I want to thank the members of the Senate and the House, particularly Jim Cooper, Michelle Bachman, and others who have stepped up uh, so quickly. And we will be speaking on this floor um, quite a few times in the future, Madam President, as we give updates about this issue. And I thank the Americans who have been an outpouring of support for children in Haiti, for all people in Haiti, but particularly the children and particularly the orphans that need our help. And I yield the floor to my um, good friend from Utah. Senate, the Senator's time has expired. Under the previous morning business is closed. Under the previous order, the Senate will resume consideration of H.J. 